If you're setting up a new planted aquarium, wouldn't it be nice if someone could walk you step by step through the process? Keep watching as I share some of the best practices and pitfalls to avoid when setting up a low tech planted aquarium for beginners. Hi, Myri from Aquarium Co-op, and the first thing we need to do is gather our materials. For the aquarium, you know, a lot of beginners, they might start researching and going, what's the best aquarium? Should I get a low glass or a rimless aquarium? Honestly, if this is one of your first planted aquariums, go ahead and just go to Petco if you're in the United States. They have a sale every three to four times a year where it's only $1 per gallon size for the tank, at least for most sizes. And yes, it does come with a rim, but that rim actually serves a purpose where it buffers against any unevenness between the tank itself and the stand that it's going to be on. Speaking of aquarium stand, you can either get one that is from the pet store, it's rated for the weight of your aquarium, or you can you know, put it on a kitchen counter. Anything that is strong enough to stand up against the weight of the aquarium is very, very flat and then can stand being a little bit wet, right? And also don't forget that you want to make sure if your aquarium is not on the ground floor, the floor itself needs to be able to handle the weight of the, the aquarium, the stand and everything in it, including all the decorations, water, substrate, you know, hardscape, everything, you're looking at around 10 pounds per gallon of the aquarium size. Some people try to save money by not getting an aquarium lid, but I highly recommend that you do just because it saves you money in the long run. You're going to have less evaporation, less loss of heat, and if you have animals in it, it's going to stop them from jumping out of the tank or climbing out. I also really like getting an aquarium background because it hides all of those wires and tubing in the back that's kind of messy looking. So you can either go to your local pet store, they have lots of pretty designs to choose from. Some people just paint a solid color on the back panel of the tank. Versus me, I actually have just a piece of poster board in the back. I really like darker colors like black because I feel like it makes the plants and the fish really stand out and it, it minimizes the appearance of algae, unless you're like me and I grew a whole wall of green algae on the back on purpose. In terms of equipment, the heater and thermometer are going to be more important if you're keeping fish. So I'll put a link in the description on a blog article that talks about what size heater you should get depending on how big your aquarium is. Now the filter I do feel like is it's going to make your life easier if you do have a planted tank. Not only does it, you know, clear up cloudy water by sucking in those particles that are flowing around, but it also creates water flow so that you don't have any stagnant areas in the aquarium. I actually had a problem with one of my beta tanks where the filter was starting to fail. There were stagnant areas of water just kind of a lot of debris and organics gathering in those corners of the aquarium and blue green algae started growing there. So highly recommend getting a filter. As for lighting for a planted aquarium, that is a huge subject. There's lots of debate about it online. We actually have a whole video over here about it, which you can watch. But uh, in summary, I would just say get a planted tank LED if at all possible. Not Don't just use the default one that came with your aquarium because a plant light has all the right spectrums and light intensity that your plants need to grow well. So definitely do your research and re reviews online, but we personally recommend getting the Phoenix Stingray for beginner low light tanks. And then make sure to put that light on a power outlet timer just to make sure that that tank is getting a consistent amount of light every single day so that you don't run into algae growth problems. Substrate for planted aquariums is another hotly debated topic in the hobby. Just because the internet says that, yeah, organic soil or those enriched substrates is the best doesn't mean you should get it. I honestly believe that you should be a little more experienced or at the very least be trying to go for a high tech tank before using those substrates just because a lot of nutrients do get released from them. And if you don't know what you're doing, you could run into a lot of problems. I actually had a friend who started her first planted aquarium. She got that enriched substrate and then just ran into huge algae issues. Instead, for beginners, I usually recommend substrates that don't have a lot of nutrients in it because you can always add it in later. Get something like an inert substrate like EcoComplete, which is what I'm using here. You can use regular aquarium gravel. Yes, plants can grow in that as well as sand. 
Now in planted aquariums, you usually don't see a lot of fake decorations in there because people are trying to go for that nature inspired look with live plants and an actual hardscape. So what I mean by that is usually rocks and driftwood. There are many, many different types. Go ahead and go online and look at some of your favorite designs. Maybe choose some that are kind of beginner friendly and within your grasp of being able to accomplish. And then some of the stores, especially if they sell aquascaping supplies, they'll have like an empty tank where you can stage some of the hardscape, move them around and put them in a design you like before you purchase the pieces. Aquarium accessories you should get include dechlorinator, which gets rid of the chlorine and chloramine in your tap water, which is deadly to fish and the beneficial bacteria in your filter. You want to get planted fertilizers as well. Easy Green is an all-in-one comprehensive liquid fertilizer that's great for beginners. It has that pump head on it, as well as easy root tabs that you can put in the substrate for those plants like Amazon swords or cryptochorines that like to feed from their roots. A water test kit is useful because it can help measure some of those nitrogen compounds so that you know whether or not you're adding enough fertilizer for your plants. No matter how good of an aquarist you are, you are eventually going to run into algae issues. So definitely get an algae scraper that it's appropriate to the material that your aquarium is made of, whether it has glass or acrylic walls. Things like tweezers and scissors are more nice to have, but I really like them just because it makes planting easier as well as pruning of leaves. Finally, make sure you get an aquarium siphon. This piece of hose is a lifesaver when it comes to saving time for doing water maintenance or sucking up any little leaves that fly away as you're trimming foreground plants and overgrown mosses. The final thing you need for a planted aquarium is of course the plants. And the reason why I put them at the very end of the list is you wanna make sure you have everything on the list before you get the plants. You would hate to get to setup day and realize, oh, I didn't get enough substrate. And then now you have these plants that are waiting to be planted and that's not so good. So definitely do that. If you're new to aquariums, I would highly suggest you go to the beginner plant section of any website that you look at, just because they're gonna be a lot hardier, a lot tougher to survive in a wide range of conditions. You would hate to spend that $8 on a plant and then watch it slowly die over time you're like no <laughs> another thing I would recommend would also be get one of each type of plant that you like rather than like what you say with fish many plants of the same species the reason why you want to get different kinds of plants is because you don't know what's gonna work best with your tanks water conditions lighting situations etc so get one of each to see which will do well and then when you're choosing the plants, get some really short ones to put in the foreground of the aquarium, some medium height ones for the midground, and then the really tall plants go in the back. My final tip would be to save up a lot of money and try to get a lot of plants all at once. You want this aquarium to be as lushly planted as possible so that algae won't come in and take advantage of the situation. It's kind of like having a lawn of grass. You want it to be really thick and dense so that there's nowhere for the weeds to grow versus if you have a patchy lawn with lots of bare soil areas, you can be sure that weeds are going to pop up there. So same thing with a planted tank and algae. All right, you got everything? Great, now we can finally move on to step two, which is putting the aquarium stand together or cleaning off the counter where the aquarium is gonna go. Step three is to rinse off the aquarium and any accessories like the hardscape and substrate. A lot of them tend to have dusty, silty particles in them. So you wanna rinse them out so you don't have cloudy water problems later on. Go ahead and install the background at this point if you have it. And then some people like to quarantine their plants. Now, I personally don't do it for disease reasons, but more just to get rid of any duckweed or snails and snail eggs that might be on the plants. Put your aquarium on the stand and then gently pour in the substrate. You want about two to four inches of substrate just to give the plant's roots enough space to grow. And then this is your chance to add any root tabs in if you have cryptochorines, swords, or other plants that feed heavily from the roots. Step five is to place the heater and filter in the back of the aquarium and then start playing around with the hardscape. Position those rocks and driftwood where you want them to be. Take your time because this is going to form the skeleton or foundation of your design. At this point, you can fill the tank with about six inches of dechlorinated water, which will help with planting the plants. It'll kind of support their leaves a little bit. Now we don't want to ruin the substrate and hardscape that we just laid down. So I like to use 
a plastic bag or a colander to pour the water through or onto so that it'll buffer that water pressure and not mess around any of the design. Step seven is to finally plant the aquarium plants. I have a whole article over here on how each specific plant likes to be planted. Some of them want to be in the substrate with their roots covered. Others can be either tied to or even glued using super glue gel to hardscape such as the driftwood and the rock. In terms of placement, some things to remember is I kind of mentioned before, have your shorter plants in the front and your taller plants in the back so that they won't block each other out. Look at where your light is going to be in the aquarium and then put those plants that need more light directly underneath them versus the ones that like more shade or low light, maybe on the edges farther away from the light. And then finally, once you plant the plant, don't move it. Plants really don't like to be moved. I mean, you can imagine, right? It takes about anywhere from a week to sometimes several weeks for a plant to get over the shock of being moved and then finally starting to grow new roots and leaves again. So you might want to sketch out your design beforehand and then that way you can really finalize it and where you plant that plant is where it's going to be for a while. After all the aquarium plants are planted, go ahead and fill up the water on the rest of the tank and then we can go ahead and add the lid and the light as well. Wait about 30 minutes before turning on all the aquarium, mainly because if you have a heater, it needs to get acclimated to the temperature of the water. After that, you want to wait another 24 hours just to make sure there are no leaks in the aquarium and all the equipment is still working just fine. So step 10, what do you do after the whole aquarium is set up? Well, one thing to know is that you may see some melting back of leaves and you were like, what? What's going on? Why is this plant dying already? Well, a lot of these plants were grown in plant farms out of water. And so the leaves they have are big and huge and they're used to taking carbon dioxide directly from the air versus when they, you submerge them underwater, they need to get rid of those old, what we call immersed grown leaves and they need to grow submersed grown leaves that are submerged underwater and capable of taking nutrients and carbon dioxide from underwater. Those leaves are usually skinnier, smaller in general. But again, if you see that melting back, don't throw away the plant, keep it in there. As long as the roots are okay, you should see new leaves at least in a couple of weeks. Also, remember what I said before about the plants being in shock every time you move them. So in the beginning, you don't want to add a lot of fertilizer or a light because the plants are in shock. They're not growing. They're not going to be able to use those components. Instead, the algae will be able to if you're not careful. So start off with very, very little fertilizers and lights and then slowly each week increase it until they are able to take in all those building blocks and nutrients. Because we're doing a low-tech tank that doesn't have carbon dioxide injection, the main two levers that we can adjust to control algae and plant growth is the lighting situation using a timer, you know, how long is the light for, what intensity if you have that kind of control on your light, as well as the nutrient level. So make use of that water test kit. Make sure that you have, at least if you're using Easy Green, 20 ppm of nitrates to make sure that your plants have enough food to grow. Best of luck with your new planted tank and let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I'll try to address them in future videos. See you later!